Today I wanted to share with you guys a little bit about the bumpy road of wash and goes. But before I get into that, I want to direct your attention to our new resourceful blog, thecoilycode.com. So if some of you prefer to read your content, you can head over to that website, thecoilycode.com, bookmark it because I don't have an option for you to subscribe yet. Hopefully that will be in the future, but I'm an avid reader and writer and I enjoy blogs. And so I just wanted to provide that extra resource for those of you who may prefer to read versus watch a YouTube video. All right, so now let's get into this. The first thing that I had to do was accept that my wash and go was not going to look like what we know wash and goes look like and uh, are represented usually by a looser, silkier curl pattern. Secondly, I also had to come to terms with the fact that there will be some risks that I'll be taking to figure out what was going to work for my hair. So that, those risks included breakage, dryness, because I had to experiment. Even though there are a plethora of people online with type 4B, 4C hair textures that do wash and goes, it didn't necessarily mean that it will work for me. My hair texture is very different. I also have fine strands. And so it's very important, even though the information is out there, you don't really know if it's going to work for you until you try. So I also came to terms with the risk that I would be taking by this experiment. The first area that I needed to, to hone in on was the technique. So a series here online that really helped me get started was Kimberly Shirell's Wa Mastering the Wash and Go series. And that really involved shingling and raking. So the first time I ever tried it, I got some really good results. The only problem is, as we will find out with doing it for ourselves, my shrinkage is what prevented the hair from staying the way that it looked on day one. So I knew that shingling and raking were not going to be long-term techniques that would uphold and maintain the integrity of my wash and go. So scouring the YouTube world, I landed on Anthony Dickey's method, and that was the second technique that I learned, and game changer. It was just everything I needed to accomplish the wash and go look for my hair. And I have a video here on YouTube showcasing how I do that technique. It is my signature standard wash and go routine. After finding that, the next big step was figuring out what products were gonna work for me. The most frustrating thing of this whole experiment was finding products that wouldn't make my hair flake. And it was flake central for weeks, mainly because I was combining products. I wasn't sure how my hair was gonna react to certain things and ingredients and stuff like that. So it really became a trial and error over and over again. But one day I thought to myself, because I already had the kinky curly come clean, I realized that perhaps I might just need a system from one brand that actually gives you instructions about doing a wash and go. And Kinky Curly was that for me. So I went ahead and bought the Not Today Leave-In and Detangler, as well as the Curling Custard. I was getting ever so close to the perfect wash and go, but I ran into another problem. The issue with the custard is that while it gave me definition on day one, day two, day three, and day four turned into a, a matted mess. So I knew that system helped, but I needed something to give my coils more longevity. And that was when I discovered the Extreme Wetline Gel. That basically has been propped as the holy grail of the natural hair community, especially in the wash and go sector. Now, I know a lot of people say that the, the wet line is not a natural product. So this taught me though that different as we all are, that means we come, we're going to experience different setbacks or different limitations. I knew that the wet line gel gave me the definition I wanted, as well as the, moisture, the longest moisture retention and also the look and feel that I wanted my hair to have for the four days that I was rocking my wash and go. So the trade-off is that because I have a tighter coil pattern, because I have a kinkier surface texture, I needed something heavy duty, even though it wasn't natural, but I needed it in order for me to maintain the routine and maintenance of my wash and goes. So now that I got my technique down and my products, it now became a matter of learning some other things that, you know, I can do and I can't do with my wash and goes. First, I can't do cream only wash and goes. I just can't, I can't. If you know, you know. Secondly, I have to dry my hair under a hooded dryer 
and diffuse it if I want as minimal frizz as possible. One time I air dried and let me tell you, my hair frizzed up and it didn't last very long. So I have to use heat to set my hair. Thirdly, one day I decided to try to do a dry wash and go on damp hair, that kind of thing. And um, no, that did not work for me. My hair needs to be soaking wet in order for me to get the maximum amount of definition as well as moisture retention. A big factor that almost made me quit with wash and goes was detangling an old wash and go. Now I almost stopped some time in January until I discovered the African Pride pre-poo. And that gave me enough slip to get through the tangles and get through the strands. It's not so much tangles, but getting the coils apart from each other so that we can get the shed hairs out. That's more so the problem. I rarely have tangles, surprisingly. I rarely have single strand knots, but I'll be sharing with you guys. You guys, the audio goes downhill from here. So please feel free to exit the video if you do not want to hear a voiceover. If I were you, I wouldn't want to hear a voiceover. This is so defeating when you put so much time, effort into your energy and setting up the camera and the light and stuff. And then it just does something stupid like this. You know, and they always say tech is the future. <laughs> oh boy. So I just wanted to pop in and let you know that from here on, it's going to be a voiceover. <laughs> so the African Pride pre-poo saved the wash and go from becoming a fail and before, you know, me calling the whole thing off. But what I did was, or what at least what I observed was that it began to add more time to my wash days. Now, if you don't know this, a wash and go regimen requires you to keep your hair moisturized as often. The longer you go before you refresh or wash your, rewash, reset your hair is the more tangles it will get. So for me being on a three to four day frequency of washing my hair, I knew that the best strategy was to minimize the time that it takes me to do my hair. And so the pre-poo step added an extra hour. So one day I got the idea to, instead of doing pre-poo and sectioning and trying to detangle, let's just jump in the shower, wet the hair and see what happens. Thank God for his wisdom because when I wet my hair, it reactivated the gel in the custard and provided me the slip that my pre-poo gives me. So that greatly decreased the time it would take for me to do my hair. That was a game changer. The next thing I also learned is stretching my wash and goes. And what I mean is banding the hair or, you know, taking a blow dryer with a concentrator to stretch out the hair. I know a lot of ladies like to wear their hair stretched, their wash and go, but you know, I tried the banding method and it taught me so much about how customizing this journey is. I have low density, fine strands. And so when I tried to do the banding method, the results are basically cobwebs, very stringy, looks like heat damaged hair. So I knew that was out for me. Now I haven't personally tried doing the stretching at the root with the nozzle or the concentrator nozzle, but I also fell in love with my shrinkage that I don't really mind it. And to me, it just allows for my wash and go to last longer. So stretching is out of the story for me right now. Maybe I'll revisit it in the future. And finally, I think the most important revelation or lesson I've learned through this bumpy road of a wash and go was knowing when to stop experimenting. Because I came at a fork in the road when it came to, should I continue experimenting or should I stop? Now, if I continue to experiment because, you know, I love products and want to try different things, but that causes so much stress and manipulation on my hair. And so that started to turn into breakage and a lot of manipulation. So then on the other end, wisdom tells me to keep doing what's working and don't stop until it stops working. So with my system, with the kinky curly system, with the wet line gel, it gives me the results. It performs consistently. So I really don't have any reason to do any more experimentation. And I guess it's also important to note that you'll know when to stop when your experiments start to hinder the long-term goal. I'll talk a little bit more about this in another video, but sometimes we really have to discipline ourselves and 
do what's working even though it may be mundane and we want to try new products and new styles but if it's working we have to stick with it in order to achieve the long-term goal and my long-term goal is long hair and the experimenting proved to hinder that so I just had to finally stop and this was a big game changer as well so I hope this video was eye-opening and helpful to any of you who may be considering a wash and go regimen um, it has been definitely wonderful to uncover the gem of what my hair is and I am planning on making some regimen changes for the, this quarter and I will share more about that. But in the meantime, you can head over to thecoilyco.com for more resources and those resources will more than likely turn into videos. So have a wonderful and blessed day and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one and hopefully my mic will be working. <laughs>